today is a big day at the ports. Uh, Biden's new plan uh, is uh, is kicking in today, and this is really going to help uh, the ports and the the backup. Uh, what he's done, and uh, he got the he got the ports to agree with him. Um, what they've done is they're going to start charging for every uh, container that has been sitting waiting to be taken. Uh, every container gets a hundred dollar fine uh, if it's been there for nine days waiting for a truck or six days waiting for a train. Now, <clears throat> there are still uh, 51,000 containers. So as of today, any of them that have been sitting there for at least six days get a hundred dollar fine. Now, um, that sounds like a good plan already. Um, but the the money is compounded daily. So with 51,000 uh, containers, the estimate is that by the first week, the fines will total $144 million. Now, all of that money is going to be used uh, by the uh, state of California and uh, and the ports to make things more efficient in the future. Now, so you know, everybody who is shipping has said they're going to pass those fines on to the consumer because they can't help it. They can't get them out fast enough. And so the Biden administration has put this in, and I think a big round of applause because I think that's going to help us. Uh, an awful lot. An awful lot. Um, mm, yeah. A little late on the uh, yeah. applause there. I don't know well, why they, they I think people for... might have been a little shocked. A little shocked. Maybe they um, couldn't figure out the path as to why charging these companies an extra $100 million will help us. Uh, no, it's not $100 million. It's $144 million. $144 Just million. this week. Just this Just week. Just this week. Yeah. But week two will be Week great. two is going to be great mm -hmm. because, remember, it compounds. Mm. So it's going to be great. How many businesses can we put out? I, I swear to you, that is the goal. It, it has to be. It has to be. Chaos is everywhere. But I want you to know. That Stephanie Rule, she works for NBC. Um, she wrote an article, and I think it's very, very, I mean, she's very, very, she's one of us. The people who are just out there in the middle of the country. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, she wants us to know how safe we are. She said, um, there's a dirty little secret about soaring inflation. She said, nobody knows exactly when the inflation numbers are going to go down, but let's put all of this in perspective. This is going to make you feel good. Mm. This inflation is not in isolation, and the government predicted that it was going to be a challenging recovery, recovery all tied to COVID. So it's why you see things like that expanded, the expanded child credit. You've got families of over 60 million kids on average getting an extra $430 a month for people on fixed incomes, older people on Social Security. They're getting those fixed payments adjusted next year up to 5.9 for inflation. Mm. So the dirty little secret here is that nobody likes to pay more, but on the average, we have more money to do so. Household savings have hit a record high over the pandemic. And we, we didn't really have anywhere to go out and spend. And as I said a few moments ago, we're expecting retail sales this holiday season to break all kinds of records. For those who own their own homes, the value of their homes are up. While the stock market uh, isn't the economy, you have over half of American households with some investment in the markets, and they've hit market highs. <laughs> all of a sudden, they found that point. Yeah. After all the years of telling us how it didn't make any difference when it would go up under Republicans. Correct. Now, now it's not the it. economy, but it's just right. incredible. Look at all the growth. And I don't know about you, but I can pay for the extra milk with what I've earned in my house. Real? How hmm? are you taking out a... 
uh, no. an equity loan. No, to no, pay no. For I milk. have extra money because my house has gone up in value. Mm, that's on so, paper. You don't my, actually have that money. And oh, excuse me. Mm-hmm. And my four hundred one k is worth more. I can afford meat. <laughs> I can it's afford how many bread. <laughs> I can afford that. I go to the gas station and I just tell the guy, "Do you know what my house is worth now?" And they give me more gas. Mm. Now I'm not sure what they're going to do once they close pipeline five. But that's a different story. Can you fuel your car on milk? Hmm? Do you have do you have a milk engine? That I could- hope, mm-hmm. but uh, I don't think they're working on it anymore because of the cow farts. They're heating the. <sighs> anyway, well, I, I did have one hmm? one observation here. Yes, okay. on, all, on all of this, and on it's incredible this. reporting. Yeah, as you point out. No, I've got some more. I got one from Bloomberg that's even better. Well, but isn't there an issue here mm-hmm. when you say, "Hey"? Look, guys, don't worry. Prices are up, but we're giving you more money to pay for those higher prices. Mm -hmm. Isn't the reason why (laughs) the prices are up is because you keep printing money and giving it to people? Are you saying that inflation is too many dollars chasing too few goods? That's kind of my definition of it. (laughs) You don't know. There are tons of goods right out off the coast of California, okay, Mm -hmm. just waiting to get in. So what are you talking about? Prices going up. There's plenty of goods in China and <laughs> in the, on the, off the coast of California. But that's like paying for mm-hmm. milk with your mortgage. It doesn't. It I don't doesn't know work. what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. You you don't understand the economy oh, okay. like the elites do. For instance, the elites at Bloomberg. Supply chain shortages are constraining U.S. consumers' endless appetite for buying whatever they want, whenever they want. And it's about time. There are better ways to fill your soul than buying stuff, says Bloomberg Financial (laughs) News. It's become the conventional wisdom that the U.S. economy is built on Americans' endless appetite to buy lots and lots of stuff. So it's, it's weird. It's conventional wisdom. No, it's called Bretton Woods 2. Think of this. We we got off the gold standard. The world freaked out in 1972. We got off the gold standard. And they said, uh, you're going to cause all kinds of problems. You'll inflate your money. And we said, no, we'll never do that. And don't worry. We're going to be the buyer of all of the goods. So we're the world's number one consumer. These same people made us into the world's biggest consumer by design so the government could have its wars and its great society. That's what happened. And they made us consumers so we could keep the economy going. Now they're lecturing us because they have a new plan. I'll tell you about that in a second. It's become conventional wisdom that the economy is built on Americans' endless appetite. Household consumption makes up about 67% of GDP. When the economy falters, we're told spending is our patriotic duty. But suddenly, Americans can't spend like they used to. Wait a minute, I thought we had plenty of money, but nothing our money could buy. Store shelves are emptying, and it could take months to find a car a refrigerator, or a sofa. No, a refrigerator and stove, that actually uh, didn't take months. That took a year. If this continues, we might need to learn to do without. Oh, and horrors. Live more like the Europeans. This is from Bloomberg. And horrors. The elites talking down to the average American and telling you what you should do for your own good. Remember, you're not going to own anything by 2030. If the Great Reset gets its way, by 2030, you'll own nothing, but you'll like it. That actually might not be a bad thing, because the U.S. economy could be healthier if it were less reliant on consumption. Uh, What's it going to be reliant on? After all, Americans haven't always acted like this. We entered an age of overabundance. We consume much more than we used to and more than other countries. 
Consumption per capita grew 65% from, 90, from 1990 to 2015, compared with only 35% growth in Europe. Oh, let's be more like Europe. These numbers reflect big changes in Americans' lifestyle. The average U.S. home was 1,700 square feet in 1980. By 2015, it was 300 square feet more. Even though the number of people in the average household shrank, in 1980, 15% of households didn't have a TV. Now only 3% don't. In 2015, 40% of American households had three or more TVs, including 30% of households earning less than $40,000 a year. In 1980, only 13% of households had two or more refrigerators. In 2015, 30% did, including many low earners, uh, earning households. Clothing purchases have increased fivefold since 1980. Our spending habits have slowed during the pandemic, but despite all the shortages, we've come roaring back. There are many reasons we become a nation of shopaholics. We become richer which means we spend more. Many goods have become cheaper and more accessible. That's partly because of technology and that made production more efficient. But our the big factor here is this, the stuff from abroad. Imports and goods and services' a share of GDP nearly doubled since the 1980. The pandemic has revealed vulnerabilities of this hyper-efficient global market. Ports are backed up now. But there is reason to believe the age of overabundance is over. We have to truly take serious protecting the planet and being a good global citizen. Take seriously driving an electric car or s installing a solar panel. Yes, it will mean that we have less to throw away. But maybe that means getting by now with only one refrigerator. Oh my gosh. Lower expectations. Do you remember what Obama said when Trump said he was going to he was going to have us roaring back? That'll never happen. It can't. This this is by design. By design. So, Stu. They're all making the case that America has more we have more. Hmm. We we haven't spent our money uh, during the pandemic, and so we've gone crazy. And I was, this last one was from Bloomberg. Bloomberg, yeah, the the, mm -hmm. the company that made its fortune on um, terminals for investors to invest in capitalism. And yeah, but it's, it's not just a con regular you know uh, computer terminal it's mm. it's a fancy screen for elitists yeah that, that have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars for I the think subscription it's tens and tens of thousands, thousands of yeah. dollars yes. but then that's also of course owned by a guy who is a multi-billionaire and uh, basically commutes to bermuda uh, constantly where he owns a giant chunk of the island correct when he was mm. mayor and concerned about you know, global warming. Yes, he was commuting from his home in Bermuda to New York City. And he but experienced global warming because I remember, if I remember right, he used to leave when there would be really bad blizzards in the city that he was supposed to be running yes. and then just run things from Bermuda. Yes, he which did. <laughs> He's one of the people. Look, right. He has special needs, and so do some of these people who are smarter than the rest of us. Right. They know what's right for us. And so they're teaching us right now. It's funny, too, because the regular people seem to be the ones saying, please don't print multiple trillions of dollars. Yeah. So yeah. that in Inflation doesn't go higher. Right. We don't the, want you to pay for the increases that you're causing. We want you to not to cause them. Right. We're also saying Democrats are also saying global warming is at the bottom of their list of concerns. <laughs> yes. Democrats are mm -hmm. saying it's at the bottom of their list of concerns. But we're shutting down pipelines. I mean, we're not. The federal government is. They're shutting down pipelines and making gas go up in hopes that the media, that nobody believes anymore, in hopes that the media will convince you that that's somehow or another the evil petroleum companies that are just gouging you. And hoping that you will remember that everything this government is doing is making prices go up. 
I want you to think about $144 million in fines at the ports this week alone. This has gone into, into practice today. $144 million in fines for all of those companies this week. Who's going to pay for that? You will. You will in higher prices. Whose fault is that? Mr. Build Back Better. I can make things worse. I can make things better. You know, when Ronald Reagan said the scariest words you can ever speak are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help, it's never meant more than it does right now. Joe Biden, I'm, you know, I'm going to get the guys at the uh, port on the phone and I'm going to help. Good God, no thank you. No thank you. That's one week alone. What happens next week?